Well, hello there. So this is going to have to be called stepping out of the comfort zone. So position vectors is what we're going to be having a little look at today. So a position vector is really another way of just saying the coordinates of a point. So if I've got A there, the position vector would be called OA, and if the distance along I was A, and up j was b, you could call that a over b. You want to make a note of this little diagram, and the statement I'm going to give you now is that a b is always going to be equal to o b take O A. And what does that mean? If I was to do that vector from A and then do the negative of A, because that's A, that's B, then that would give me the same vector that would take me from A to B. Now, often remembering this almost becomes impossible. It's more important that you think through actually what's happening from one place to another. When you come to a real situation, it's often easier just to look at the difference in the coordinates and then see it back. I'll show you an example now. Okay, our first little question is, what is the posi position vector of A? Which just means, how do you get from the origin to A? which means we're looking at the coordinates really, but using the, the language of mechanics, we're talking about it as a vector to i and a vector to j. So it's 3i along the horizontal, and then that's going to be plus 4j up the vertical. The second question we're going to have is, what is the position vector of b? And we're going to be looking at exactly the same idea. So we're going all the way along to 11. So it's 11i. And we're going up to, so it's 2j. And the question that's all been leading up towards is part C. The vector from A to B. Now one way we could do this would be to use what I was just talking about and say that is going to be OB, that vector, take that one. Or the other thing you could do is look at it in terms of the difference in here, which is effectively the same thing that we're talking about. So to go from O to B, is 11i and then if we take the 3i that is o to a and then we're also going to have going from o to b which is 2j and we're going to be taking o to a which is 4j and that gives us 11 take 3 is 8 i and 2 take 4 is minus 2j. I think to look at here is actually couldn't I just say from 3 along to 11 is 8 and from 4 down to 2 is minus 2 and yes you can it's the same thing it's just the official form of doing it and the way in which you may see this. Okay that's the end of that example. One more example Okay, so the next example might look something like this. We're told that OA is 5i minus 2j and AB is 3i plus 4j. We need to know the position vector of B and the exact value of 
the magnitude of OB. Remember, that's what these two vertical lines here either side mean. What is the size of that vector in simplified third form? Now, you could try and work all this out without drawing a, a picture, but I think you're going to make it more difficult for yourself than it needs to be. You're going to have to think harder. So I'd always start off by drawing a picture, and I know that my 4J is as far up as I'm going to be going there. Um, one, two, and then 5i is as far along as we're going to go. Two, three, four, five. So a is going to be at 5 and negative 2. So there's my a. And we know that from a to b, we're going to be going 3i. So that is across 3 and 4j. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4j so that's telling me I can get up to B being just there and what they want to know with the position vector of B is what do we do to get from the origin to B so that would be along 8 up uh, Two, so that would be 8i plus 2j and then the exact value of o to b so that means what is the length of that line so that's time for our good old friend Pythagoras to come in and ob if we call that um, if I call that little b b squared is going to be 8 squared plus 2 squared which is 64 plus 4 is 68 so b will be the square root of 68 and then all we need to do is simplify that which i could do by thinking about whether or not 4 goes into i think 4 is going to be the biggest square number or i could just say uh, put it in the calculator what's the square root of 68 and it is 2 root 17 so yeah square root so that is our final answer and then all we need to do is start practicing a bit so make sure you've copied both those examples down uh, they're on page 242 and 243 in the textbook and then we're going to have a look at a few questions on exercise 11d Okay, we're looking at page 243, exercise 11D, and all the problem solving and exam questions, which are questions 4 to 7. So question 4, 5, 6, and 7. Have a good go at those. If, um, if you don't have a paper copy of the textbook, uh, email me, let me know, and we can sort that out for you. Um, okay, talk to you later, mass friends. Bye-bye for now.